Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at two keyboards that come in at very different price points. I thought it would be fun to take a look at a $50 keyboard and a $200 keyboard to find out what makes it worth the extra 150 bucks. We're gonna be taking a look at the Corsair K55 and the Corsair K95 Platinum. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and just take a look at these two keyboards. Starting with the keyboard's construction and design, the K55 is made entirely of plastic while the K95 is made of aircraft grade brushed aluminum. Because of this, the K95 Platinum is much heavier and has almost no flex compared to the fairly flimsy feel of the K55. The footprint of both keyboards is very similar, and both keyboards are about the same size with their wrist rests attached. Speaking of the wrist rests, the K55 has a simple plastic wrist rest, while the K95 has a dual sided textured rubber wrist rest that can be changed to your preference. Both of these keyboards do have RGB backlighting, but it's important to note that the RGB on the K55 is fairly limited. The K55 does not use Corsair's Q software, meaning that you can't go in and create custom lighting profiles or effects. Instead, there's over 10 different lighting effects that you can choose on the fly. The K55 also uses three distinct lighting zones rather than full per key illumination. This results in slightly less than fluid animations on the wave effects and limits the preset effects available. Aesthetically, both keyboards look pretty nice in their own way. The exposed switch design of the K95 Platinum goes great with clear Cherry MX switches and the low profile top cover of the K55 gives the keys a floating appearance. The K95 Platinum has full 16.8 million color per key RGB backlighting. It uses Corsair's Q software for virtually unlimited options when customizing your lighting profiles. You can also save up to three profiles directly onto the keyboard's memory for taking the keyboard with you to use on other machines. In addition, the multimedia keys and the Corsair logo also have full RGB illumination. The K95 Platinum also introduces a light bar to the top of the keyboard with 19 distinct lighting zones. Both keyboards have six macro keys on the left side of the board. The K55 records macros directly onto the keyboard, while the K95 Platinum can be programmed in the software and then saved to the keyboard in one of the three profiles I mentioned earlier. The macro keys on the K95 Platinum are also textured. Speaking of textured keys, as an added bonus, the K95 Platinum, like most of Corsair's mechanical keyboards, comes with two sets of textured keycaps. You get a set of QWERDF for MOBAs and a set of WASD. One of the biggest differences is that the K95 is mechanical and it uses either Cherry MX Brown or Speed switches. The premium Cherry switches offer a far superior typing and gaming experience over the standard membrane keys of the K55. Now I actually like the font of the K55 a lot more than the font on the K95 Platinum. The K95 Platinum uses Corsair's big bold font and while it does let more light through it looks kind of ridiculous although it really isn't that bad once you get used to it. The K55's font is far more simple and clean looking, and I wish I could get keycaps for my K95 Platinum with a similar font. Both keyboards do have good illumination of the keycaps, and all of the secondary characters are illuminated as well. Both keyboards do have dedicated media keys, with the only real difference being that the K95 Platinum has a textured metal volume scroll wheel, and its multimedia keys are also RGB as well. Both keyboards do have fairly simple LED indicators consisting of simple white LEDs. Although the K95 Platinums are less pronounced, resulting in them being a little bit less distracting than the ones on the K55. On the underside of the keyboard, the K55 has four small rubberized pads and two extendable legs that are not rubberized, while the K95 Platinum has fairly large rubberized pads and rubberized extendable legs, as well as a cable routing system integrated into the bottom of the board. And the K95 also has a USB pass-through. This results in it having a larger braided USB cable that splits into two USB connectors, while the K55 uses a simple rubber cable with a single connector. Overall, there's just no disputing which is the superior keyboard, and I want to make it clear that this video isn't intended to bash the K55 or decide a winner between the two keyboards. That would just be absolutely ridiculous. The idea here is to see what the extra $150 in price gets you. As you would expect, it gets you a keyboard that's better in every single way, but is it enough to warrant a $200 purchase? After all, with its dedicated macro and media keys, somewhat limited but still RGB, and very accessible price of 50 bucks, the K55 really is not a bad option either. That said, the K95 Platinum is still one of my favorite keyboards to date, and for those willing to spend the money, the K95 Platinum offers an experience that very few keyboards can come close to. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Let me know in the comments down below how much you're comfortable spending on your gaming keyboards. Are you one of those that's more happy with the $50 range, or is price not an option and you'd rather have the more premium $200 keyboard? Consider giving this video a like if you enjoyed it to show your support, 
And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button because we've got a lot more videos coming for you in the near future. You can also follow me on Twitter at BrainBeamGaming and Twitch at twitch.tv slash BrainBeamGaming. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.